beautiful 20 seconds three landing. We are so excited not only to have you here with us, but we're excited because we're taking off on a two day trip. And I'm gotta, I gotta tell you, things have been changing so incredibly here. It's been absolutely wild what's been going on. Incredible changes in the fishery and everything else. And even the information I have for you right now is about maybe three hours old. So it makes me wonder if I'm going to be a little bit out of date. So um, once again, it's great to be with you. I'm going to go through the process about where I think we're going tonight. Jeff from the 540 Slangers. Jeff, always great to see you. Thanks for your constant support. Thanks for always being there. 540 Slingers, if you want to learn how to chuck the iron, then you can definitely do it. Chef Jason, come on in and say hello. Chef Jason, I hope you've seen his cooking mm -hmm. videos. Great guy, and he's going to, of course, be on board with us. Yep. Good to see you, man. Heck yeah, pleasure, yeah. pleasure. When are we doing another cooking video? Oh, soon. As soon as we get back from this trip, hopefully next week, once we get some fish yeah, going. We're going to so. do bluefin and white sea bass. And yellowtail, I, I mean, halibut. that's the plan, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. halibut, yellowtail, sea bass, all of that. All right, and you're all geared up. We're going to do some slow pitching. We're going to do all kinds of stuff here. Yep, we're going to do some slow pitch jigging. Uh, we'll do some vertical jigging. Uh, along with everything else that goes along with the bluefin side of stuff and uh, hopefully we'll get a white sea bass uh, doing the slow pitch. Perfect. That's the plan. I'm going to get everybody up to date and then why don't you come in and give a recipe in a little bit? Yep. Do you think that's a good idea or not? Uh, we can give we'll think quick. about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll okay. just get everybody caught up. All right. Hey, what are your plans to fish? What type of rig? Oscar Geronimo. Joe Patino. Joe. I love you, man. Thank you so much, Joe Patino is a member of our armed forces, part of the great men and women who protect our country. Joe made that for me and I will have that with me till the day I die. Giant Jamie, good to see you. Thanks so much, I really appreciate it. Tracy's Lounge, good to have you here. Oscar Geronimo. All right, let me kind of tell you what's going on. Yesterday, Mark Paisano was coming back from San Clemente Island, three miles off of Pyramid Head. Three miles, okay? That's down there at the east end of the island. He runs in to these giant schools of big bluefin tuna. In fact, Janelle up in the front office was on board. She said they were literally surrounded by bluefin tuna that didn't want to bite, but the volume was there. And both Mark and I, he was giving this to me in real time. Yeah, hit that like button, please, if you don't mind. He was giving this to me in real time. So we were communicating, trying to decide about tonight's trip. He said, Phil, get everybody geared up. We're going to put kite gear on the boat. These fish are huge. I'm thinking that it might turn on at night. So I put out an email to our group. I told them to keep it quiet just for a little bit. And then the word got out. But I said, gear up for big bluefin tuna. Okay. And, you know, and also, you know, the smaller stuff. So, of course, we've got all kinds of gear for both species ready to go on both. Talked to Mark not that long ago. And he said, Phil, I'm not seeing it today. It's not here today. And I've talked to the boats south of me. So this is a little bit old info. They may have gotten bit in the afternoon, but I'm talking to the boats down south of me. They're not catching. So either the fish have moved or it's a down day. And that happens, and especially with bluefin tuna. They put their nose in the mud, a term we use to say they're just off the bite. And then all of a sudden they kick back into gear and they're biting really, really well. So we're left with this dilemma now. Do we go back to where Mark didn't see any fish and keep our fingers crossed that it's going to bite? And these are decisions that I don't take lightly because these trips are expensive now. And when you come out on a Freeman Adventure trip, man, I mean, I put my heart and soul into trying to make a decision. And I ultimately defer to the captain, Mark Paisano, who's out on the water every single day. He's just a great kid, capable captain, and knows better than me. But we were both on the same wavelength. Both of us we're on the same wavelength. So I talked to him and I said, you're not talking about, um, let me read your mind here. Are you talking about hanging a right and going up to Nicholas? And he said, yeah, I am. And I said, hmm, I couldn't agree more. How many times do you get a weather opportunity? I mean, that place has had 30, 40 knots of wind all season long. And when you get a window, you catch some fish. So we're going to have five knots of wind there in the morning. Nothing. There's been halibut, there's been white sea bass, there's copious amounts of rockfish and cheap set. We can get some fish in the sacks, maybe get a score on the white sea bass. Remember, the limit is three tomorrow, so we're all excited about that, and hopefully 
will get up there, make a catch of white sea bass, get out of there maybe four or five in the afternoon when it's supposed to get windy, start to blow up a little bit, 12, 14 knots, and then later in the evening it's gonna blow. And the subsequent day, Friday, is gonna be probably unfishable out there. So we got that window to hit Nick. This is how we're thinking right now. We hit that and then we take off for Clemente. And we run down there east and we end up in that bluefin tuna area in the dark, perhaps, if we get out of Nick on time and we see if we can't roll up on a nugget and hammer those things at night. That's the plan. I know they weren't there, but things change. And the way this is changing right now, it's really, really fluid and volatile. So that's the plan for right now. Get out there and make a hit. And then we can spend most of our day looking around for BFT, looking for kelp patty yellowtail, looking for all of that stuff. So our fingers are crossed that that game plan is indeed gonna pan out and work for us. So we're watching that super closely. Uh, hey, Jamie says hit the like button if you would. It really helps us a lot. Would appreciate it if you could do that. Uh, Tony Russo, tight lines, Tony. Thanks for checking in, my friend. We really appreciate it. We appreciate all your great support. So we're really excited about this. Now, in a moment, right behind me there, I'm going to set out a nice little buffet so everybody can get a sandwich and some chips and some cookies and really load up here before we go. We provide that on all our trips before we depart. I know sometimes people are super busy and they don't have time to really plan. So we make sure you get a nice meal before we take off. Anybody has a question out there? I'm more than happy to answer it for you. So what we have on our hands, and as we look up and down the coast for tomorrow, we've got really nice weather, beautiful, gorgeous weather. And that is half the battle because you know how this wind has been crazy this year. Yesterday, I was ready to jump out of my skin because of all that fish that Mark was seeing. I mean, I could hear the enthusiasm in his voice when we were talking in real time. And, you know, he even said, I got to go, you know, and he sent me a photo of the sonar mark and that looked really, really good also. So really, really interesting. I like going to Nick tonight, unless there's some new intel that is broken here in the last couple of hours, which the way this is going, it wouldn't surprise me. So what I was saying is I take this really seriously. These trips are a lot of money. Then you go out and buy all this gear. That's a lot of money. We really want to give you your best shot. That's what we're leaning on doing here tonight so far. Oscar Geronimo, good to hear the game plan. Always good to know what you're getting into. Yeah, and um, there was a gentleman, uh, Tom Nelson. He'll be joining us tonight. We had a young man, Jonathan. Jonathan, if you're watching, man, we are really going to miss you. Jonathan Morales, he's got COVID, so he's not going to be able to join us. Another person with COVID. So this morning I was looking at, you know, two cancellations and... Uh, I put it on the morning briefing and boom, we were full before you knew it. One of those guys was Tom Nelson. So I told Tom, here's what is going on. Um, there's, there was an incredible amount of bluefin seen yesterday. They were all over the place. Clemente looked really good. That is a viable option for us. However, Tom, I want you to know that this is before the book. <laughs> I want you to know that Mark just called me. He's not seeing it today. Not seeing it, okay? And Tom says, Phil, I know how bluefin tuna fishing is. I get all, I just want to go fishing with you. And I said, Tom, I just want you to go into this with your eyes wide open. And that's exactly what he did. So let's, let's keep our fingers crossed as this all works out. That Amigo crew is outstanding. They do such a great job. And I am really looking forward to fishing with them. Glenn Gray, good luck, Phil. Glenn Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate that. My very best to you, and I can't thank you enough. And 6 you N, good luck, boys. Get a big one. We'll do our best for you because you're constantly here for us. I know that very, very, very much. So, some sponsors, um, Blacktail, providing hooks for everybody on this trip. Sky, down there at Best Fishing Tackle in Hawthorne, California. I send my very best to you. You are number one. Thanks for your great support. And I look forward to working with you in the very near future. And also Suzuki helping to sponsor our great trip tonight. It's so nice to have Suzuki on board for this trip. I had the pleasure of working with them on the, you know, remember the guy that came from 
uh, Italy. He came from Italy on that inflatable, came into San Pedro. So that was a fun interview, by the way. If you haven't seen it, that translator was hilarious. She was screwing with this guy the whole time. But I get, had the pleasure of working with the guys from Suzuki, Ron Bolante, who's a PR guy. And man, I'll tell you, first class, really awesome guys. Looking forward to working with them in the very near future also. And of course, Opsin Fluorocarbon. Opsin Fluorocarbon, we've got plenty of fluoro for everybody on board this trip. I just give it to the crew. You walk back to a crew member and say, hey, rig me up with some fluoro, and they take it from there. Greg, it was good to see you and your son this morning. I drove out to Los Angeles because I needed some more Opsin Fluorocarbon. Got out there, and it was great to see my good friend. Uh, really, really always awesome. And of course, right here, Daiwa. Those guys are the best rod and reels you could ever want to take out and fish these big bluefin. That is going to be a lot of fun. Hey, and also, um, we're going to be slow pitching at uh, San Nicholas if we do indeed end up there. And I hope to have some video on that. And of course, Gary over at Taddy Lures. I don't know if I'm grabbing the right jig or not, but Gary was so cool to have provided us with yeah, I think that is one. That's squid color. Gary's got us uh, some really good slow pitch stuff, so we'll be trying that out. Jason will be doing that also. All right, let me look here. Evan Leeper from the 540 Slingers. Evan, it was good to see you over there at Sam's Place Island Fishing Tackle in Carson, California. Richard, good luck. Richard, thank you so much. All my best to you. Really appreciate it. Jamie Argent, Suzuki is where it's at. Love my dirt bike. Yeah, they do a lot of great products, no question about it. What's that? I need to repower. Repower, yeah, there we go. Everybody does, it seems like. Albert Ponce, hey, Phil, we wish you the best of luck. Albert, thank you. And we thank you for the morning briefings. We went out of Ensenada this past Sunday following your advice and hooked up on a 110-pound BFT. Albert, nothing could make me happier. That is freaking awesome. And you might want to put up there, if you want to give the guys that you fish with a recommendation, by all means, do it. I, I trust you. You're part of the Friedman Adventures family. So anything you put up there, you might be able to steer guys in the right direction. But folks, my kids get so angry with me. When I launch into my Mexico is not that dangerous. As long as you stay in the tourist areas, you're going to be, my kids say, dad, Please let everybody think it's dangerous. It's going to get too crowded down here. And it's going to ruin all our fun. So I've been going for 50 years to Mexico. I have yet to have a problem. Yes, I've run into the mordida, the bite. A few cops that have taken some money from me, you know, on some stuff. But in most cases, I literally will argue with the cop. But I speak pretty fluent Spanish, so I'm okay there. You might get that. You might have a problem that way, but for the most part, you stay in the tourist areas and you're going to be just fine. Albert, you are number one. All right, let's see. Pay Ev his money. Good to see you the other day at Island Fishing Tackle. I love hanging out at Island. Always good to see you and everybody else. That's a fun place. I got my office there at Island Fishing Tackle. I got one at Big Fish Bait and Tackle. Uh, basically, it's a chair that I sit on in the corner Kind of like reminds me of fifth grade when the teacher threw me over in the corner all the time. So those are my offices. And I tell you, I love all those guys. And there's so many great people you can run into. Can you please hit that like button while you're watching us? I would really, really appreciate it. Joe Patino, good luck. Hope you guys get them. Joe, again, a member of our armed forces, great guy. Joe, I miss fishing with you, man. You got to get back here and we got to go fish that base one of these days again in Seal Beach. That was so much fun. Can't wait to do it. Dave Javero, good luck and slay some fish. Albert Ponce, we went trolled at high speed, nomads and nothing. But the minute we changed it to a 240 gram diving Rapala, that was the ticket. Hot off the, uh, the press, whatever it is, but from Albert there. So that is really great news. Thank you, Albert, for sharing that with everybody. And folks, if you'd like, to learn more about crossing the border. We're going to do a trip, I think, around Dia de los Muertos. So that's November 1st and 2nd. And I believe that's a Monday, Tuesday. So probably the weekend before that, 
We'll be down in Rosarito. We'll probably go to Ensenada, do some fishing. And then uh, on Dia de los Muertos, those two days. And, and I'll also have somebody explain to you about that, that whole, the significance of Dia de los Muertos. If you don't know, like, the inside about that special celebration, I think you'll be stoked to learn more about it. I certainly was. I took my son Patrick down there um, a year or two ago. I can't remember. And I said, let's go. And so we were at the Rosarito Beach Hotel. We just drove. Uh, I said, where's the local cemetery? We went to the local cemetery. We started walking through it. You could see everybody putting marigolds around. You could see mariachi bands playing. Some people are drinking grandpa's favorite tequila. There's all kinds of ways to remember those who have gone on. And I was walking by a guy and I held up my camera, said, is it okay? Kind of, and he goes, yeah, yeah, go ahead. You can, you can film. And then I ended up getting his story. It was his grandfather's uh, tomb. They had all gathered around it. He was almost in tears recounting what a good man his grandfather was and what a good person. So pretty cool stuff. And I'll have more on that trip. We're going to go fishing on the weekend. We're going to have a barbecue around this beautiful pool at a hotel down there in Rosarito. And then on the first and second, we'll be handing out thousands of dollars of clothing and food to people who really need our help. And that is all thanks to you. You're the ones who donate. You're the ones who help us do it. I have a whole warehouse full of stuff in La Mirada at Gallagher Staging. Joe Gallagher, thank you so much for allowing us to store this stuff there. I launched into this big thing with Joe when I saw him the other day. Joe, I really want to... He said, stop, 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 stop. Don't, don't even. Those people down there really need our help. We are so happy to do it. Love Joe and Joey Gallagher, the whole family. Let, let me not leave Megan and everybody else out. They're all top-notch people. Dino, Phil, I have a good feeling that this trip is going to be wide open. Dino, great minds think alike, I'll tell you. Good luck, guys. I will be on your trip with Captain Bill in July. Thanks for all you do. Hey, man, I'm having such a good time, Dino. Part of the reason why I am is because I get to meet great people like you and all of you folks who are here with us tonight. It's really, really great. Let me look at my watch here. Not because I'm getting bored or anything, just because I got to set this buffet up, make sure everybody gets fed, make sure everybody gets hats and some hooks. Thanks again to Blacktail, Opsin, and uh, Suzuki. We really appreciate all you have done to make this trip so special. And just one other request. Yeah, like uh, limits of white sea bass. Hmm, that might be a little too much, asking for 90 white sea bass as the limit has gone up to three. We'll see what happens. And then a hit on the bluefin would also be really, really great. Um, Dino wants to help out on the November trip. I can't think of anybody else I'd love to have along. We're, we're, we have so much stuff. And of course, we'll help We'll get some people in Baja to help us out also. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to sort it all out. Uh, we're going to figure out where we're going to give it. We want to give it to where it's most important. There's a commercial fishing area just short of when you get into Ensenada. You're coming in on the outskirts. And I was in there, and there's some guys that are not doing that well in there. They're really hurting. So fishermen helping fishermen will be part of the theme. And then we'll probably go into the backcountry. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll make sure that the people who really need it get it. And if you want to be part of that, I'll have more information on that as we move along. Just rattle my chain and let me know about that because uh, that's going to be great. Um, it sounded to me the last time I heard, and thank you so much for hitting that like button. Really, really appreciate it. Keep pounding away at that. It sounded to me, from what I heard in talking to Mark, that the fish also to the south of us were down today. Now, as I said, hopefully it rallied in the afternoon and started to bite, but it sounded like it was a little bit down. We will have to get updated on that. The way this has gone, Mark is going to pull in here in a half hour, and he's going to say, hey, Phil, you know that thing about Nicholas? Um, forget it. We're, uh, we're heading in another direction now because the tuna are wide open. It really seriously would not surprise me. Things are so fluid and so crazy. Uh, let's see here. Albert, hey Phil, if you need anything for your Dia de los Muertos, we are game. We have a beach house right next to the Rosarito Beach Hotel. Hey, what's up, Jose? You want to come in here and say hello to everybody? A lot of people know Jose. He's joining us. How on are this you? Trip. How are you, my friend? I'm 
Ready to go. Are you ready? Yep. Are you ready for anything? Anything. You got your tuna stuff ready? I got everything. I love you, man. Thanks for being here. <laughs> All right, Jose is on board with us. It's great to have him here. So many great friends will be joining us. Let me get back to Albert here. Uh, oh, you got a place at the, uh, near the Rosarito Beach Hotel? Hey, uh, Albert, can you leave me the keys to that? Uh, I could really, I'm just kidding you. Phone number 657 227 6459. And any of you out there want to communicate with me, please text me first. So many times I'm doing a voiceover or some crazy stuff. So send me a text and then I will get back to you as soon as I'm available, I promise. But if it's a phone call and I don't recognize it, I don't answer it because you know how that is. You end up with on the phone with some maniac for two and a half hours. So uh, send me a text, uh, Albert, and then we'll go from there. And thank you so much. That'd be great to have you on board with us on that Dia de los Muertos trip. That's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do some fishing, as I said. We're going to do some dining, fine dining. And when I say that, fine dining, I'm mostly talking about walking down the street and eating in taco stands, but there's nothing finer than that as far as I'm concerned. I love street food. I was all over the street food in Seoul, Korea. I was all over the street food all throughout China, around Shanghai and Quinchon, down to the south. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So that's my idea. Anytime, Phil, seriously. Oh my God, Albert. I love you, Albert. And, and something else, Albert, in case you didn't know, my middle name is Albert because my dad's name was Albert. And when my co-teacher in China, you know, they are, the people in China want an English name and, you know, they're not up on English names. So they have their Chinese name. But for foreign teachers like me, can't pronounce Chinese all that well, they want an English name. So Shelly came to me and said, what can we call my husband? You know, I really I want to have a good English name for him. And I said... Can't think of a better name than Albert. He was my dad. He's the one who taught me to help others. He was the president of St. Vincent de Paul at Nativity Parish for 30 years. So I got to see that all the time. I got to see him taking a phone call and running out to give somebody some money. My mom, same thing. She was really active in uh, the Catholic school. And they both booted me out of the house when I was 18 and sent me down to Costa Rica to spend a year teaching uh, just as a, a part of working with the Catholic Church down there. And then I went back to Mexico and did it for a couple of years. So love it. Albert, I just thought I'd tell you this. I'm, not, I'm, I'm Actually, I'm just trying to butter you up for the keys. That's, a, that's really what I'm doing. Jamie, hit that like button, everybody. One more time because I'm almost getting ready to say goodbye. Aloha, Phil. Good luck tonight. Thank you so much, MJM. So nice to have people from around the globe tuning in to us here at Friedman Adventures. Um, Grunion Run on Friday night. There will be a morning adventure tomorrow. You're going to have to see how I'm able to pull that one off as well as Friday morning. And then the Saturday morning tr uh, show should be really outstanding uh, because I'll have all this info for you. So the plan right now is to make a right-hand turn Go about 60-something miles, I think it is, to Nick, if I remember right. Um, fish that, hammer some sea bass. I know there was a little bit of a catch there today. Um, the Endeavor had some fish up that way. So that is a viable option for us. We'll take a look at that. Hopefully spend the day there. Uh, junk everybody out with big sheep's head and white fish and those nice Johnny bass and all that great rock fishing. I actually like that more than anything. It is so much fun. Um, let me look over here. Um, hey, Albert, thank you. I, I, I guarantee you I will be taking you up on that. And I deeply, deeply appreciate it. I love heading down to Max and my kids, same thing. And I got to promise Albert to say that, you know, it's really dangerous down there. You shouldn't go. You should stay at home 24 hours a day and nothing will happen to you that way. That's what they want me to say, but I can't help it. Uh, 540 Slinger. Any idea on bait for your trip? Well, Jeff, I'm glad you asked. Yes, we do have squid on board. Not a ton. We want to get some more. We've got enough to get through to the afternoon tomorrow, was Mark's estimate. We'll see. But we have enough, I think, to make a sea bass halibut catch. We're going to try to top off somehow. I don't know if Mark's able to connect with a light boat and get some squid tonight. But I will tell you, he will pull out all the stops and do anything possible to get that on board for us. So that should be very, very interesting. 
Um, folks, let's see. Oh, and of course, I'll be shooting a video on these trips. I rarely fish. Rarely, rarely, rarely. If I see that everybody's got a fish and I've got photos and, and a video, then once in a while, I'll jump on a rod. I did that on the Amigo up in the bow and bounced that yellow up in the bow, about an 18-pounder. Jeff Jessup looking out the window, talking to Jeff Martha on the radio said, whoa, hey, you know, for an old man, you still got it. So I took that as a very nice compliment. They were there with the gaff and I go, man, I'm gonna throw this thing. So that was a lot of fun and hopefully I'll get a chance to do that on this trip, but I like catching those big sheep's head. Speaking of that, last time we were at Nick, we got shellacked with the weather. It was just horrible weather there at San Nicolas Island. But we were up pretty tight to the island, and I ran to him, and I took a lead head and squid and underhanded it out, and I swung on this fish, and I could see it was a formidable little devil. And Mark Paisano Jr. was up there in the wheelhouse, and he looked out the window and he goes, I don't know what you have, but it looks like it's big. And anyway, after a little bit, it ended up being, I think it was either 22 or 23 pound sheep's head. Nice big goat. Fun to catch, great eating, really pull hard. And when you're catching it on a lead head and squid, it's like catching, a, I mean, it's like catching a grouper that pulls line or a giant bass. I mean, it's so much fun. I can't believe it. Folks, would really appreciate it. If you give us a like, let's get it to 50 before I say goodbye to you. All right, let's see. Angler 112, what sinker rig will you be using tonight? New and improved or old reliable? Um, so Angler 112, not sure what your name is. I'll call you Angler 112. Sounds like we're going to Nick tonight and then we'll be fishing that tuna tomorrow night is my guess. Everything's so fluid, everything's changing so much. Uh, and I think we're gonna go with the new rig that you saw in Sam's video. Gonna definitely go with that. However, um, you know, we have a good shot. One thing that had changed before this down day today, if it stayed down, I'm hedging my bet here because I haven't heard any, I haven't, I've been running around getting ready for our trip and picking up fluorocarbon and all that. Um, one thing that changed, and I noted it on the morning briefing this morning, was the fact that the fish were starting to react to the chum. They were starting to get on the surface, that 30 to 50 pound stuff. Like Jeff Marklin over there on the Thunderbird who does such a great job all the time, um, he was telling me that uh, they, they sinker fished, but they didn't get that many. It was a lot of fly line bait type of fishing. So fluorocarbon, 30 to 40 pound mono, choosing a really good hot bait. Maybe we'll get a shot at that. That is for sure. Hey, what's up, Bert? You want to come in here and say hi? Are you camera shy or? Oh, Bert is camera shy. Bert Carlson. Bert Carlson is here. He's a great fisherman. He's a long range idol of mine. He has taught me absolutely nothing. No, I'm only kidding. Bert is a great guy. He's out now. He's throwing yes. stuff at me. Yeah, he thinks I'm going to poison his sandwich at the buffet tonight. But it's great to have him here, and we're going to have really a great time. Yes, on the new rig, N6UN. Yeah, we have to go with that new rig. Hey, I got to get out of here, you guys. Can you give me the 50 likes, please? I got to put up this thing and take care of these guys. And Mark Paisan, I want to talk to him. Actually, I wish kind of that. We were still on the air when Mark walked in, but let's see, what time is it? Yeah, he might be. He might be. Is the Amigo anywhere around out there, Jason? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Hey, you guys are doing good. 42 likes. What's that? They're supposed to be at 7. They're running late. Oh, shoot. 7 o'clock. I'll keep blabbing for a little bit longer. 44. Good job on the likes, everybody. Any more questions before I say bye-bye? Uh, put them up there. Our next trip, I think we have two openings, is on the Pride sailing on july the 5th it's a two-day trip we do two-day trips it gives you so many more options gives you so much more range so i think two spaces on that you want to go on that send me a text i'll give you that number in a second here run and get a pencil piece of paper uh and then text me but i won't be able to respond until saturday 657-227-6459 we have three trips on the malahini down in san diego this year uh, those are those one-day tuna trips, leaving at 6 a.m., returning at 6 p.m. Those are great trips. And then we have a couple more, two days on the Amigo and the Pride. And that fall fishing, if the bank comes back to life, should be really good. Incidentally, let me explain why, in case you're wondering, why we leave 
you notice most of my trips are weekdays. And the reason why is, let's say we go out there today and make an incredible catch on bluefin tuna three miles off Pyramid Head. You know what that place is going to look like on Saturday? It's going to be a freaking joke. So I like fishing weekdays. You, you get a substantial amount of boat pressure even on the weekdays now nowadays, but it's less than you would normally get. So fishing the weekdays, I know it's a pain in the you know what for many of you because you know you got to take a day off work. But if this is an important hobby of yours, if this is something you really like to do, then maybe you could take a day or two off and really, really come out and catch some fish. That's the idea. Almost 50. I might have to make it 100 once we hit 50, and then you'll keep me, you probably are going to 50 so fast to get me out of here. Some guy uh, said, boy, you talked for 15 straight minutes. Wow, can't you just put video of the fish and let that do the talking? So I guess that guy wanted me to like just run video with no comment or anything else. Trevante, come in here and say hello to everybody, man. We're doing a live podcast. <laughs> okay. Say hi to Noah. What's up, Noah? <laughs> How are you, man? I'm, I can't complain. Man. God, it's good to see you. I'm can't so wait. happy you're here. Can't wait. We got all kinds of crazy plans. Ready? Are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right, cool. I'm ready. Next time, Noah, right? Of, of course. All right, cool. Of course. Thank you, right. Trevante, who has made several trips with us. I'm even thinking about smoking a cigar with him, and I don't, <laughs> I don't smoke. But I see him smoking one, like a victory smoke all the time. His son, Noah. Remember I told you about that really windy day where I caught that big sheep's head? His son Noah, I think was 15, had two of the three yellowtail that we had on board. Bill, I can't remember Bill's last name right now. Sorry, Bill. Bill had the other one. Um, yeah, great guy, Trevante. So great to see him and great to have him in here. All right, um, can we hook a few more likes? Yeah, thank you, Jamie. Uh, best of luck, Joe. Wait a minute, Joe Patino. Wish me luck out here fishing the Potomac, Potomac River. That sounds like fun. Are you fishing right now, Joe? And if so, um, that is really freaking awesome. Phil, these guys are ready to eat. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, I'm going to have to do that. Uh, Brandon, hey, Phil, I'm scrambling to get to San Pedro. Well, you, you should be because you're on the trip. Do um, you think Amigo will get mad if they put the reels on for me? Getting... New line took longer than I thought. I think your question is, you want the deckhands to put the reels on your rod? Is that it, Brandon? I, 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 the great customer service on there. If you want them to do it, I'm sure they will do it for you. I will, I'll help you do it too, or we can do it, you know. Uh, Chef Jason will help you to do it. If, if you need help putting your reels on your rods, we're more, I think that's your question. Anyway, um, I know, they're hungry, and I got to get to them here. Pretty soon, Joe Patino, part of our American military. By the way, have you seen Top Gun yet? I loved it. In fact, yeah, you can see it up there. Maverick, Top Gun, let me get out of the way. Oh, shoot, I should stand over here for a second and let Greg from Austin Fluorocarbon and CCA get a little bit of the goodwill that they deserve for being such great sponsors. So, yeah, Top Gun, Maverick, this is how crazy I am. When I like a movie... My wife thinks I'm absolutely nuts. When I like a movie, I freaking go back. And I, I, I have this thing, like, especially that movie, that deserves to be seen on a full screen. I know now I'm doing movie reviews. But I go back over and over and over. So I'm on number four. The, and I'm a Tom Cruise guy. I like Tom Cruise. I think he's a good actor. So in China, I had seen Mission Impossible nine times. They have bitching theaters there. So I'd seen it nine times, and I usually go to bed really, really early because I get up really, really early to do the morning briefing. And I was, I've was i been on that same schedule since I was a deckhand, commercial fisherman. So anyway, I'm in China. I'm looking out my window, 9.30 at night. There's a 10 o'clock showing, and I'm pretty tired, and it's snowing outside. And I said, ah, what the hell? <laughs> so I walked out. The front of the school, I had my little apartment on the school grounds, walked out, I uh, hung a left, and then I hung a right, and I walked down about a mile to this beautiful mall, and I went and saw it my 10th time. So, will I see Top Gun five times? At least, I know. My wife hasn't seen it with me, 
and I really want her to see it, but she's really got a busy schedule with the grandkids and all that. So um, hopefully she'll be able to see it. By the way, when I, so one of the reasons I go to the movies for that, I know I'm not talking about fishing. I'll get back to it in a second. One of the reasons I do it is, so when I go with Ruth to the movies, so there's the movie screen, right? I'm like this the whole time because I'm translating the movie on the fly in her ear. So I've seen it enough times where I've got it down pretty good now. I almost know the lines. And so I've got to translate it for her. And there's times like, sometimes I get caught up in the movie and then I get an elbow and just her going like, like, what is that? You know, I can see this is something really cool. Keep going, keep going. So anyway, that's my life with my beautiful bride from Costa Rica. Um, all right, uh, Brandon. Yeah, all right, awesome. Thanks, Phil. I have the screwdriver also. Great. I don't think they have one on board the Amigo. Just kidding. I think they do. Uh, but I'm in the car, so yeah, I'll tip the crew if they can put the reels on. Hey, I'll do it. How much? Yeah, just tip me. Screw the crew. Those guys are probably won't do it anyway. They're too busy, you know, playing poker. So yeah, I'll do it. Just let me do it. Uh, hey, Jason, you want to put some rods on a... On, you want to put some reels on a rod tonight? Sure. This guy's going to tip us 100 bucks. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're in. Michael, I'll come I'll in here. That was a hell of a we're, fucking video. <laughs> wait, be, watch your language. We're on a live show here. Hey, hey, what's going on Do you get to say hi? What's going on with the pride, man? Our trip is July the 5th. Can't wait to do Look, that. Looking forward to it. I am really it's looking forward to it. It's a good time of the year. The fishing's probably going to be really good. So you guys are out tonight, right? We're about to leave right now. Where are you going? Do you know where you're going? We're not quite sure yet. We oh, you're keeping it options. secret. We got a couple options. We yeah. got to talk to the charter master here and uh, decide exactly what, that, what what he decides and go from there. Right on. Well, we'll be give, out there, too. Give him our opinions on the best opportunity, best fishing, and uh, go from there. I always listen to the captain, and then at the very end of it, I say, screw you, I'm doing my own thing. No, I always defer to the expertise of the captain. That's the I'm, way to do I'm it. sitting here. In a podcast office. <laughs> Are you coming in here for that? Yeah, right. Whose right. birthday is a party, right? We're oh. going fishing, We're man. Going fishing. We're going fishing. Yeah. I want to see what you guys are doing. Hey, here. Michael, you got to go. The water's warming up at all the all the islands. It's 72 degrees here in the harbor. Don't go anywhere. There's yeah. good fishing. Yeah. Just about at all the islands. You can't really go wrong. You just have to be in the right place at the right time and uh, have a good time. All right, Michael. Pride sport fishing. You can look them up by doing what? Uh, call, 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 call the landing and uh, talk to Mike or anybody in there. And we'll get you set up. That sounds great. Thank you, Michael. You go. Good Thank, luck. Thanks, Phil. Hey, Have we might luck. see you out there. Bert, yeah. come over here with that crate. Yeah. What are you guys doing with this? It's nonsense? a party. It's, it's, it's a, a party. Whole year. Yeah. Whole year. So we're here to party. We're, we're yeah. going to have a good time. We're going to catch some fish. These guys want their food. That's what they want. Oh, is that what it is? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I heard I heard some good intel on the uh, on the fishing, and I was told to keep it a big secret. When I got home from work, there was a podcast, and everybody knows about the secret fishing hole. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Exactly. <laughs> hey, um... Oh, here's Brandon again. Uh, you need to go check the ATM in San Pedro for Brandon. After you put his reels on his rod, he's got to take cash out. Sorry for all the questions. Yeah, so uh, can you do that? Uh, he's going to tip you 100 bucks. What do you mean? What, what the heck is that? I, I know, this I know guy? what he wants. He wants me to check the ATM. If he wants oh, to give me the 100 bucks, I'll find it. Oh, all right. Are you going to go check the ATM here? Yep. What do you need? Uh, some cash or something? I, no, it's this guy. Yeah. Oh, somebody's writing you a little letter? Yeah. Yeah. Brandon, uh, once we get your reels on your rods, uh, <laughs> then we'll check the ATM. We'll make sure there's toilet paper in the bathroom. And uh, what else can you do for this guy? You're going to meet him in just a few moments. So what else? We're going to hook get, you up. Will you give him a birthday we hat? Got, we got custom lead heads for you. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna catch sea bass, and we are going to catch some tuna. Yeah, baby! Are, are we allowed to use profanity on your podcast? You can, but it's kind of friendly. You can it's, keep work, it. it's working, so there'll be plenty of money to pay. Hey, Brandon, there's, you can get plenty of tip money for got, Bert, me, We got everybody. Uh, Chris Roseanne coming, and he was the hot stick oh, on the last one. I love Chris. He's a great fisherman. My buddy John had to... He, he, He's adulting. He's a um, successful businessman up yeah. in San Francisco. And, yeah. And he put the hammer on him and he couldn't go fishing. Oh, uh, well, uh, that's the way it goes. All right, let's see. Is Brandon good? We love you, Michael. Good seeing you. Is there anything you want from uh, Michael before he leaves? Hey, Michael! All right. Can you check? Hey, I'll see you. I'll, I'll, I'll see you in just a little. Can you check and see if there's room in the trash can? No? No, Brandon, bring a trash can, please. 
All right, everybody. It's getting crazy here. All right, uh, perfect. Thanks, Phil. You're always taking care of us scrambling. Hitting the 405 soon. All right, you can see that being a charter master is more than getting the food and getting sponsors to donate things, making sure everybody's happy. It's about putting reels on rods, checking the ATM machine, and who knows what else. Just kidding. We're happy to help, Brandon. All right, uh, where's the pizza? We didn't do pizza, man. We got a beautiful spread with rye bread or, or um, wheat bread or white bread or um, artisan bread. And then we got ham and turkey and jalapenos and lettuce and mayonnaise and mustard and chips, delicious tortilla chips and ginger snaps for dessert. And I know I'm leaving something else out. Maybe that, maybe that's it. But what the heck? It's something, right? Hey, a few more likes, please. Uh, and then we can get out of here. Rich E. Rich, love what you do for us, Phil. Rich, not as much as I love what you are doing for me. I really super appreciate it. Gosh, I mean, I've been in the business for a while and I come back, grind out a year, and man, the, the response from all of you, Rich and everybody else, can't thank you enough because so many of you are throwing likes on here, you're sharing the videos, you're telling friends about us, and we're just on this huge trajectory. My kids are like going, Dad, you're still ascending. And I said, yeah, I mean, the last time I looked, um, I think it was 120,000 views in the last 28 days and still like that, and it was 18 or 19,000 hours of content consumed in the last 28 days. And there's nobody I owe that to more than you, Rich, and you, Joe, and you, Brandon, and you, um, Jeff, everybody. I mean, all you guys. I really, really uh, appreciate it. Fatima Velasquez. How did I miss Fatima Velasquez? Jason will do it. Are you talking about Chef? J oh, you're talking about Chef Jason. I know who that is. Fatima, it's good to see you. Jason will do what? Oh, Jason will get the ATM and all that. Yeah, I think you're right. Fatima, been too long since I've seen you. Need to come down there to Shulbs and say hello. She's down there at Shulbs. She's such a delightful person. Go down there and order some food and she will take great care of you. I'm sorry I almost skipped over you. All right, let's see. Um, Joe Patino, Richie Rich. Yeah, um, I smell <laughs> jalapeno contest. Many years ago here at 22nd Street, we put on a jalapeno contest and it was freaking crazy. We had people crying and it was really a lot of fun. Thanks for the likes. You folks are rocking this thing tonight. Really appreciate it. Um, the reels. Oh, yeah, for sure. I know Fatima. He's out there doing it right now. He heard about that $100 tip that Brandon's going to throw out there. So, yeah, we're all over that. Chris Pro from Tucson. Love your podcast, Chris. Thank you for tuning in from Arizona. We've got people tuning in from around this big, beautiful country of ours, the United States. We've got people from Mexico tuning in. I've got people in Taiwan who regularly send me messages all around the world tuning into the Freedman Adventures podcast, and I cannot thank you enough for that. Ed Nesbitt. Ed went out on Cobalt 2. Weeks ago, nothing was biting. We put out the good old cedar plug and starting hooking up immediately. I'm guessing, Ed, that was bluefin tuna. And yeah, that cedar plug, man, for a piece of wood, <laughs> it really is effective. Seems to work. It's one of those old proven lures that seems to work every time. All right. Sorry, Greg from uh, Opson. There you go. And Wayne, CCA. There you are. I'm out of the way. All right, everybody. I think it's time to say goodbye, get these guys fed, and head out. I'm glad you got to meet a few of the guys who were on our charter. And again, the game plan right now, hang a right, go to Nick, catch some white sea bass, maybe a lot of white sea bass, limits gone to three now. Rock and roll, and then big sheep's head, and a lot of other fish. That would be fantastic. Paul Heron says, thanks, brother. Paul, thank you. You! Thank you all so very, very much. We really appreciate all you do. All right, Friedman Adventures, this live podcast. We're going to say goodbye to you all so I can take care of these guys. 
Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for your great support. Thank you for always being there for us. If you want more information on upcoming trips, our trip to Mexico, around Dia de los Muertos, or anything else we are doing, just send me a text 657-227-6459. Hey, God bless you. God bless America. Thanks for joining us. Wish us luck. And we'll be back with lots more. Anchor, hoping for butts, man. That definitely is a huge possibility. All right, Chef Jason's yelling at me. He's trying to break into the ATM, and Mike Morrison put him in handcuffs. So I'm going to go see what's going on. Take care, everybody. Have a great one. And I'll see you when we get back with a Friedman Adventures video. Can't wait to do it. Thanks again, and I really appreciate it.